Hey, welcome to Crimson Woodworking. And as promised, I'm going to do a uh, short review on the on the Craig tra uh, track saw. And uh, one of the things I wanted to, to start out with is that Craig really, I think, is making a small mistake on how they market this track saw. And that's that they're marketing as an adaptive cutting system. And if you haven't saw that, just just do a search for that. And it's a it's a table that Craig makes with a, with a track that flips down, and it and it's really a neat way of replacing a table saw. Or if you feel uncomfortable with a table saw, it's a great way to make compound cuts, so uh, uh, any kind of breaking down of sheet goods. And but it's not. A table saw. If you already have a table saw and you want a track saw, this is a great track saw. I'm really pleased with it. Um, what I used before is you may be familiar with okay, like this that you clamp down and you measure your saw off to your blade. Mine was four inches and you make your marks and keep it four inches away. And, it, and there's a lot of variables that you can make a mistake with something like this. And what I went to after that was this monstrosity. And you know what, this works, it's really great. Uh, you lay it on your sheet good and it's already pre-measured pre for your particular circular, circular saw. And you can make a great cut with this. The only thing is it's it's heavy and it's kind of hard to move around and it's not a track saw. Uh, and then I, I found this at Christmas and it came with uh, with the saw and two 62 inch tracks, two for $3.99. Now this was on Amazon around the second week of December. And when I looked at it, I thought, this has got to be a mistake because the saw itself is $2.99 and it's a $99 per track. But now I'm, it's almost like I'm getting a free track. So I ordered it and uh, the saw came in just before Christmas. And then like a few days after Christmas, one track came in and I thought, uh, maybe I was wrong, maybe I'm not getting a second track. And then a few days later, from a totally different company, I get uh, the second track. And uh, it gives you an able to cut uh, a huge, uh, huge amount, a 122 inch cut with both of them connected. And it came with the connectors. And I tell you what, I really, really like it. Uh, the rubber on the bottom of this track is uh, is great. It, when you lay this down, you don't need any clamps. It just it sticks to your wood, great. And that was one thing I want. I wondered when I got this is that am going am I going to need any clamps? And so far the answer is no. It came with this nice bag. Um, it's it's a great little saw. And I thought I would uh, go over a few of the things that I like and, and a couple of stats about the saw. The, on a 90 degree cut, you can cut two and one eighth inches deep. Uh, on a 45 degree cut, you can cut one and one half inches deep. And that, that's good, especially on the 90 degree cut that you can cut more than two inches. Uh, a, a two before is an inch and a half, actual inch and a half thick. But I get a lot of wood, um, I have a lot stacked behind me that I buy from the Amish. And there's this rough cut wood. And if I were to get a two inch piece of wood, it's two full inches thick. It's not less than that. And then I have to plane it and uh, join it myself. But being able to use this on that wood was, was great. Now, if you're gonna compare, if you're thinking about getting this Craig in your want to compare it to something, Festival makes a larger track saw and they make a smaller track saw uh, called the uh, Festool 55. And I'm assuming that's an 
stands for the size of the blade, five and a half inches. And it would compare with this. Only I think this is better. <laughs> Actually do. It has a, a built-in anti-kickback that you can just flip on and off. And where festivals, you have to kind of adjust it on the track. Uh, this, this tool has the, the wrenches to change out the blade, all built in the handle where you can't move them. Your uh, adjustments to adjust it on your track when you first get it, it it's set where it'll, it'll, it'll move, but you can, uh, you can adjust those real easy. Once you do one time, it's great. It'll, it'll slide back and forth so easy. Uh, a few things I like about this saw, it, uh, it's not that heavy. It's 11 and a half pounds. It, uh, it comes with a 48 tooth blade. M most of your track saws do not come with a blade count that high. Most of them are around 36. And I love the cut that I get. I I'm not gonna do a cut today because there's a lot, a lot of adaptive cutting system videos. If you wanna see the cut quality, it's great. On plywood, which is a known chipper, it, it doesn't chip, it cuts great. Uh, the track saw has a, uh, a splinter guard the, that you only have to set it one time and, and it sets it at your uh, height of uh, where it just, just touches whatever you're touching, whatever you're cutting. And it keeps it from splintering up. And that is great. I didn't know if a splinter guard was gonna be something that was something that I even cared about, but I do, and I'm glad I had it. It also has a uh, writhing knife. Let me see if I can push that down. That comes out the bottom there, right behind the blade. And that keeps your wood from, as you cut, wood will open up. And as you go down the, and it gets farther away from the blade, a lot of times it closes back up and it creates a pinch point, uh, just like on a table saw. But the Riley knife is gonna make sure it doesn't pinch on the blade. Um, this saw, I think I mentioned that it costs $2.99 if you just buy this part by itself and $99 each for these. Uh, versus uh, a Festool 55 is, I think right now it's $460 just for the saw. Um, Things I do like about it, I mentioned the riding knife and the anti-kickback, the dust collection. This dust collection is, is great. Now, I, I used my vac hooked up to the, uh, to the saw, and because this saw is fully housed, also like the Festool, the dust collection is really, really good on it. But this bag is really awesome. It, it attaches, uh, it has a, a large and a small little nipple, and I'll, I'll try to give you a close-up of that in a minute. But it, it attaches in, in very easily, and when I make two passes on a full eight-foot sheet of plywood, I will take this off and it will be completely full. It has saved 90% of the dust, and I love that. Uh, Dragging around a vacuum hose with a cord is in, I'm, I'm, I don't like to do that. I'll just use the uh, I'll just use the bag. It does a good enough job for me. Uh, a few other things I like is it has a a a cord guide uh, where as you cut the cord kind of stays inside there. It really. Uh, yeah, it works. Does it work? Yes, no kind of thing. It's according to where you have your track saw plugged in. I mean, if you've got it plugged in behind it and it, the, the cord usually stays in there pretty good. So it, it's something you, that it works and doesn't work. Sometimes it, it doesn't, but that's not a big deal. Uh, would I rather have cordless? Yeah, I'd rather have cordless everything but Craig doesn't make a cordless and to go with like a DeWalt cordless, it was gonna be a lot of money. And track saw is not my primary source of 
of cutting. It's a way I, I break down a sheet so it's just, this is not so heavy to handle on my table saw, which is kind of what probably most people do. Um, if you haven't bought a sheet of, uh, a sheet of uh, foam to cut on, do that. Uh, you can get these uh, inch and a half for about $22 at Lowe's or, or Home Depot for a four by eight sheet. And for a while, I kept mine at four by eight. So I could just toss it on the floor, lay my sheet goods on it and make a cut. And that was, that was great, but storing a four by eight sheet was not great. So what I did was I broke it up into three pieces. And now then I found out that I can throw two pieces down on the floor instead of all three and lay my sheet good on it and make a good cut. And if I need to cut something just on this table uh, with a track saw, just handling one of these is way better than, than that four by eight sheet. So if you get a piece of foam, I, you know, live with it in full size first to see if it's something that you want to just keep like that. Because if you do, that's fine. But if you, uh, if you want to break it down a little bit, I think you'll like that too. Um, I like that it's a right-handed design. Um, it's made to be used for your right hand, and that is a, it's a personal preference thing, and it, and it may not be something that you like. Even if you are right-handed, you may like that the when the motor's on the, the other side and you're off-cutting to the other side, but I did, and, and I like the fact that this is a right-handed blade. Uh, right-handed setup. It came, comes with this nice soft case. Uh, a lot of people I know are in love with the sustainer systems that Festival have the harder cases. And yes, you can stack those. And yes, you can put those in your truck. And if they roll around in your truck, it's not going to damage anything. But I'm not carrying my equipment I have some, but I'm mostly not carrying my equipment to someone else's place to do work. Most of it is just right here in my shop. So the soft case was just fine with me. And it's a good place to store, get everything in there. And, uh, and it works out great. Uh, some things that I would like to see from, uh, from Craig was if they offered for like 50 bucks, a little 36 inch track, I would, I would buy it because there's times when I wanna make uh, a smaller cut on a piece of sheet good that the way, if, if it's longer than it is wide, that's fine for putting a table saw, but if it's wider than it is long, if, and you, if you operate a table saw for any length of time, you'll know what I'm talking about. Those are hard to cut like that. And sometimes it's like 25 or 30 inches long. So it's for your chop saw or your, or your sliding miter saw, it's still too long. For, so a, a small track would be something that you could just pull out from under your bench and, and make your, put it on your lines and make your cut. Um, and cordless. Uh, now that I've bought this, I probably won't be buying another one, but if Craig for like $50 more had a cordless one, I would have paid the extra to get cordless because I'm a big fan of cordless. But since I don't use a track saw very, very often, uh, having a cordless just fine. Uh, let's try to get you in so you can see a little bit closer view of, of this right now. Okay, let's show you a little, a little closer view of this, uh, this track saw. Uh, the first time you use it, this uh, plastic will be actually sticking out just a little farther, probably maybe uh, three eighths farther than what it is now. And you'll turn, it says to uh, set it at like a quarter inch and run, uh, start it up and, and go down and cut it and you'll see a lot of this blue plastic just flying everywhere. And so don't be alarmed by that. What that is doing is making a zero clearance 
for your for your saw. And so so that's that's exactly how you do that. And uh, of course the book's going to go over all this. We let's uh, let's try to move the camera around and give you a little better view. Okay, uh, the depth of cut is pretty neat. You can uh, you can work move it up and down very easily, and uh, it has a setting right here. At, this is three quarters, and just past three quarters, this little arrow that says ply three quarter ply for a three quarter inch plywood, and it has the same down here for two by material. You'll notice this is an inch and a half, and just past it is a little arrow for your your like. Anything that's a two by material is actually an inch and a half. So it wants you to cut just beyond that depth. That way, if you're using foam, you're not, cut, not cutting that much into it. If you look right here, this is uh, how you determine uh, your degree of cut. You know, whether you want to try to cut it at 45 degree or 22 and a half. And uh, in the back, let's see if we can see this. It has a red knob that enables you to apply the anti-lock. Now it's off now. I mean, uh, yeah, anti-lock work. Now it won't go back on you. It's a, a kickback, I'm sorry, kickback. And uh, then you turn it off and you can move it backwards with it. And that's to keep from, when you do a plunge cut into the wood, uh, that you're already on a cut and you're plunging into a wood, a lot of times, Plywood, not so much, but hardwood, yes. It, it'll cause the saw to kick for just a second. It's always better to start your plunge off of your material and go into your material as it's running. But if you put the kick back on, then you don't have to worry about that. You can just plunge into it, and if it kicks a little bit, you can still go on down with it, and it's usually not a problem. Uh, let me move this around. I'm gonna show you. I talk about this, uh, the bag. I really like this. It, you'll notice inside it has a really small little button here and a large one over here. And you'll notice it's a small and larger on this side. And that enables you to, to uh, put the bag on properly every time. Just line it up and slide it on and give it a little, give it a little turn. And there's even a, these straight lines on your bag here that line up and then you know your bag is fully seated. And then I usually turn it just a little bit like that to kind of get it out of my way while I'm plunging. Uh, you have a way to change your blade as you hold the, the, the blade locked down to change your blade while it's plunged. You can hold it down, uh, keep it down there. And all the, the blade change equipment and then your adjustments for your track uh, come in the handle so you won't lose it. Now there's one thing that I wish Craig had did, and that's for the, uh, when, you, uh, when you join two of these together, there are some little bars that interlock on the bottom. I'll flip it over and show you the bottom. In these little tracks, it comes with another track and a little bar slides in and you tighten it up. Well, I wish that Craig had used one of these Allen keys, Allen wrenches that, that is included to tighten this up, but they didn't. It's a third Allen key that's smaller than this one. And don't lose it because you'll be searching around everywhere for it. So it would be really nice if if this key, Allen key, fit that track. But other than that, I think Craig did an outstanding job on this thing, and I would highly recommend it. If you're not in the uh, buying market for getting a table saw, or you're saying, you know, I'm not sure, table saw just doesn't seem safe, and yes, there's a stat that says 6,000 people a week go to the emergency room for table saws nationwide, you know. I'm sure 6,000 people fall in the shower a week too, but but if you're not in the market for a table saw, or you really just don't want to do something like that, the adaptive cutting system seems great. But I really think Craig is kind of missing a chance at sales by not promoting, and if you don't believe me, just put in Craig Tracksaw in YouTube and you'll my video will be the, like the first one I've seen 
on just the track saw. Everything else is on the adaptive cutting system. But if you need a track saw and you don't want to pay festival prices for it, this is a great little saw. Uh, I love everything about it. Does it cut a little slow when you're cutting through three quarter inch plywood? Yes, maybe a little bit because it has such a high tooth count, but the cut is outstanding on it. It's uh, chip free. I'm really, really pleased with this. If you have any questions, don't forget to put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them for you. Uh, if you like this, hit click on like and remember to subscribe. And if you want to see any more reviews on anything that you see when the camera's panning around, if I have it and you think you may want to know about it, let me know. I'll do a re little review on it. <laughs> All right.